Shalom Aleichem, welcome. We're here with the background of the United Lubavitch Yeshiva at 841-843 Ocean Parkway in Brooklyn between avenues H and I. This yeshiva is my alma mater. I studied here from 1970 to 1978 after attending the yeshiva at Bedford and Dean for the first three years of my life when I went to yeshiva. The yeshiva at Bedford and Dean had a fire in 1969 and in 1970 we moved to this brand new building. Many memories, many experiences, wonderful atmosphere, all types of children, all types of backgrounds, Chabad, not Chabad. In my class, ninth grade, I remember we had a boy, a student, whose father owned the Kova hat store in Borough Park. They were not Lubavitch, they sent their children here. Um, others as well. I want to tell you a few things about this yeshiva and how special the Lubavitch yeshiva was in its relationship with other communities. And I want to begin with the name on the building the Joseph S. and Caroline Gruss Building. Rabbi Yosef Shoel, Rabbi Yitzchak, Rabbi Yosef Chaya, Rabbi Shlomo Gross. Known as Joseph Gross, Joe Gross, Joe Gross. Who was he? And a special story that happened with him and the Rebbe and Rabbi Gorari, who was the dean of this yeshiva under the Rebbe's auspices. I heard this in Bet Shemesh three years ago from a person named Mr. Joe Froelich. Joe Froelich was an accountant. He lived here in Brooklyn during the 60s, 70s. And Joe moved to Eretz Yisrael and uh, he lives in Haifa, in Haifa. But his son lives in Bet Shemesh and I met him there and spoke to him. He told me the following story. It was 67 or 68, he didn't say exactly what year. And the yeshiva was preparing to build its building. Mr. Gruss had a policy that he gave the Orthodox yeshivas buildings, Torah Vadas, Torah Tmima, and many others, including Lubavitch. Mr. Gruss came from Poland. He was a survivor, and he did very well. And he dedicated a tremendous amount of money vis-a-vis -vis building buildings for Jewish Orthodox institutions, yeshivas. But he wouldn't give money per se. He gave you a building. For whatever reason, Rabbi Garari and his helpers, Rabbi Weinberg, Rabbi Katz, and others, for whatever reason, they felt that they wanted and needed the money and they're gonna build the yeshiva themselves. <clears throat> Joe, who was the CFO for, I'm sorry, Joe Froelich, who was the CFO for Joseph Gruss, said to Mr. Gruss, the Lubavitcher Yeshiva, Rabbi Gurari and his staff wants the money and they're giving me a hard time. And he said, well, I'm sorry, it's against our policy. But they were persistent. So Rabbi Gurari said, what if I brought you to my brother-in-law, the Rebbe, and we had a meeting? Would you agree that whatever he says, that's what we should do? And Mr. Gruss knew about the Rebbe, and he said, fine. And Joe accompanied him, Joe Froelich, and he told himself what happened. This is a first time revelation of this story, never before has this been heard or, or broadcast. And he said, they went into Yechidus, they had a private audience with the Rebbe, and each side presented their case. 
Rabbi Garari, Rabbi Weinberg presented their side and Joe Froelich on behalf of Mr. Gruss presented their side and they said to the Rebbe what is the Rebbe's opinion? Should the money be given directly to Rabbi Garari to build the building? Or should we follow our old time policy? We don't give the money, we build you a building and that's it. The Rebbe heard both sides and remember the Rebbe's older brother-in-law is standing there who runs and was appointed as the Menahel of the Yeshiva, the Lubavitch Yeshivas, by his father-in-law, the previous Rebbe, the Rebbe Rayatz, which I wrote about extensively in my book, Torah Vadas and Lubavitch, how he had 14 day schools and yeshivas under him in the 1940s, and there was a major article in 1948 all about him and what he was doing, that is Rabbi Garari, for the previous Rebbe with the yeshivas, running the yeshivas. So you would think that if this is what Rabbi Garari wanted, the Rebbe would say, the Rebbe would say, of course. The Rebbe heard both of them. He looked up to Mr. Gruss and Joe Froloch and he said the following words in Yiddish. Fart weiter. Which means go further. Don't procrastinate. Do as you've been doing till now. No need to make a change. The meeting ended and that's the way it was. And I think we see here many things, but one thing we see here is that you couldn't buy the Rebbe's opinion, change his opinion, even if it's his own Hasidim, his own brother-in-law. He felt and sensed that the right thing to do is to do what Mr. Gruss was always doing, and that's the way it should be. This is about this building here, the United Lubavitch Yeshiva that stands here so many years later. <clears throat> this yeshiva was for years the main Lubavitch Yeshiva. Taim Chitmim Lubavitch was here. When I was here from 70 to 78, we always had elder, elderly uh, Bukharim students, and Abdul Khan would come here and he would give them shiurim and he would test us. And here was the Fabreng as Yutas Kislev when he would Fabreng all night. And that's a show for itself to describe the image and the feeling of those all night Fabrengans and people came from the outside community to participate. It was something fascinating. He would walk out six, seven in the morning here and they would go home with a taxi to Crown Heights. And many other things happened in this special yeshiva who had such special people like Rabbi Tenenbaum, our principal, such a lovely, holy person. Rabbi Ushpal, Rabbi Bukit, Rabbi Garfinkel, Rabbi Shve, Rabbi Marlow, Rabbi Rimler, Rabbi Barnetsky, Rabbi Fuchs, Rabbi Eckhaus, Rabbi Goldman, Rabbi Bernstein, Rabbi Mendelovitz, Rabbi Weingarten, and anyone else that I forgot. <coughs> So, it's years later, and it's um, important to understand that this is a edifice on Ocean Parkway that represents an entire ethos. It represents an entire Weltstung. It represents Lubavitch, Chabad. And with the Abraham's help, with God's help, very soon we will march with this building to Yerushalayim and Heida Biyameinu very speedily with the coming of Mashiach Amen.